Hi everyone, it's Rachel with Rachel Super Cute Creations. And um, I'll wait a couple minutes while people are coming on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just get my other device going. So I hope everybody is having a wonderful evening. I see we're starting to get a few people popping on. So welcome, welcome. Let's see here. And once you come on, if you would just say hello, I'd appreciate it. Um, and you can see one of our new paintings um, at Super Cute Creations is this cute little gnome. Um, and we have a few wood pieces that are coming up as well. So while people are jumping on, I'm just going to pull up the other device and we're going to get started. Tonight is going to be all about paint pouring. So um, I can't wait to show you some techniques and some tips. Um, I'm in a totally different space today, so you're going to have to bear with me um, because normally I have the camera pointed down. Um, but tonight, I wanted to be able to talk to all of you. So welcome. Hi, Luann. How are you? Thanks for joining. Awesome. Who else is in the house? Let's see who else is in here. Luann, I hope you're um, having a great day. Luann's from Michigan, um, and it is cold here. So, and those of you who are jumping on, if you wouldn't mind sharing the video in other spaces so we can get others in here to watch, that would be great. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Can we get a thumbs up and we'll get started? All right, so um, as I said, my name is Rachel with Super Cute Creations and I am here tonight um, to show you some paint pouring. And I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to show you some different things we're gonna pour on. Um, and I am going to be offering some paint pouring classes. Um, so, Let's just kind of get started. Perfect. Okay, you guys can hear everything and see everything. All right, so I want to kind of talk about the basic supplies that you're going to need um, for paint pouring. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera down for just a second um, so you can kind of see what's on my desk. Um, and then we'll get started. So, okay. So what I have here is just a... Um, container from the dollar store. It's just one of those metal containers that you would use um, to bake something in. And as long as it is big enough to put whatever it is you want to paint on inside, that is great. And you can see I have a few cups here. Um, and these are what we're going to use to hold up our painting where we start to do the pours. Okay. And then I have some freezer paper here. Um, the freezer paper is very important if you want to save your um, skins. And so I'll talk a little bit about that for a second while I show you a couple of the snowmen that I paint, paint for. Um, the skins are what's left over from your paint that dries after you're done. And here's a couple of snowmen that I did. One is kind of a fat snowman. Um, and then this one, um, he, he got a little bit better and you can see I have some gold in there and was able to, hi Michelle, welcome, and was able to pull um, some different things. So the backgrounds um, were both the flip method and I'm going to talk today about, oh, we'll probably do four methods. There's a lot of different methods, but we'll just probably talk about four. Um, and I pretty much use the same paint, so I'm going to kind of get close so you can see how nice that is. So those are the two that I did. And, and you do have to let them dry for quite a while. Hi, Andrea, welcome. 
welcome, welcome. Um, you do have to let them dry. Now this one is a little bit fussy because I poured the background first and then I let it set. And then I started pouring the snowman. So I did the, um, I did the body first. Hi, Deborah, welcome. Glad you made it. Hi, Michelle. Awesome, glad you guys are all getting in here. And then I had to come in and I had to put some of the details in the hat. I kind of poured the hat and had to pull it out. I did use a brush here to kind of pull it out, but this is fluid painting. So um, fluid painting is totally different. Um, you don't have to have any brushes. And then what I did on this one is I actually used, I'm not sure if you can see that, I put some 24 karat gold in there and I actually used a toothpick to kind of swirl that around and, and just get a, a, a totally different look. So those are some things you can do. now. I love the hat on this one. I love the arms on this one. I don't so much love this part. So this one I'm probably going to re-pour over and try it again. <coughs> but this was my first shot at a snowman. And he. Um, what happened was I poured him too soon. I didn't let this back kind of set up. So you have to kind of play with it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. And we're going to use some different mediums tonight to pour on. We're gonna pour on um, these four by six canvases. I said we were gonna do some mini paint pours. Um, so we're gonna do these four by six canvases. We're also going to give ourselves, give a try on pouring on glass um, so that we can then mount it, which is gonna be really neat. Um, I also picked up some wood cutouts. Since it's getting close to Valentine's Day, we're gonna pour some of these. And then I have some really cute small hearts that we're gonna pour on. And these would be great for a variety of different things. And, and one of the things that I'm really thinking about, and I'll grab it and show you, is many of you know I do a lot of paper crafts. And a lot of my followers and customers are junk journalers. And so I'm thinking we could make bookmarks with these paint poured hearts. And if we tied these on, and I don't want to tie it tight because I need it off, but we're just going to pretend that it's tied on. I'll come back here for a minute here. Do, do, do. All right. Hang on. Sorry, guys. And my thought was, if this is my book, I can put my, my bookmark inside, and this can hang over the front of my book, and I'll have a beautiful paint poured um, bookmark. So another way to craft, because a lot of people, a lot of my clients say, well, I'm just not a painter. I'm just not, but I do this or I do that. So let's think about how can we paint pour and amplify the crafts that we do do, okay? So we're gonna get started. Now, some things that I recommend. Um, I recommend, as I said, that you have this um, container to pour in. You need something to set up your item that you're going to pour. So we're going to start by pouring this first. And then um, you need a pouring medium. Now there's a variety of different pouring mediums that you can use. Um, and one of the mediums that you can use is something like this, which is actually a pouring medium. Um, this one was purchased at Michael's. Um, it's an Artist Loft brand, but all of the major paint companies pretty much are making them now. Americana has it. Um, there's a bunch of different ones. Then there is something you can get at your hardware store, which is called Floetrol. Um, and that is a great medium to use. I don't have one of those up here in this area, um, but that's a, something you can use as well. And then you can also use... Um, PVC glue, um, P I'm sorry, PVA glue. You can also use Mod Podge and some of those things, okay? The other thing you want is gloves um, so that you can keep your hands clean. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, in order to mix your paint, um, I like to use these Dixie Cups and you do need to mix your paint each color in a different cup. And I know, you're yes, you're gonna use quite a few cups when you do this. 
But if you want the consistency right and you want it to dry correctly, you need to do this. And I typically like to pour with four colors, okay? And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna use some of this medium. And I like to pour about one part to one part. A lot of people will, will weigh this, measure it. Um, I mean, I've not had any problems. But, um, and then I use just a little bit of water. And when I do that, I typically take this, I recycle my bottle. So this isn't a brand new bottle. Oops, and there I went over. Do what I say and not what I do. Oh my goodness. I use about a cap full of water. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my pouring medium because I got more water in there than I wanted. Okay, you do want to use you love the bookmark idea, Luann? I'm glad, I'm glad. I wasn't sure what people would think, and that's why I wanna pour one so we can really see how pretty it's gonna be. All right, what color do you want me to mix up? I've already mixed up red and pink and white and this gorgeous silver. What color um, do you guys want me to mix up? Let's mix another color to go with those. I'm gonna let my viewers choose the color. I have blues, I have this, I have a gorgeous purple. This is a metallic purple. Um, I have turquoise, this beautiful turquoise. Anyone have a preference of colors? And then I have multiple colors behind me. Michelle says purple, who else wants a color? Anyone else wanna pick a color? Come on, everybody's so quiet. Purple, Deborah says purple. I've got two votes for purple. Anybody else have a different vote? Come on. All right, purple's it. We're gonna do purple, and I love this. I don't know if you, you can't see it very well with my light, but it's a metallic, and when we mix this up, it is gonna be beautiful. This is a brand new bottle, so bear with me here. And of course, I have my gloves on. Oh, that wasn't too bad. All right, so. I'm going to show you up here. I want to just add, this is a thicker bodied paint. Okay, so I don't need as much as if I had a thinner bodied paint. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, paints like Apple Barrel, um, some of your Craft Smart paints um, are a little bit thinner. And those of you who have painted a lot know um, you get sort of this watery. So it's the consistency is probably like the consistency I have right here. And those thinner body paints, you tend to have to use a little bit more. Um, if I'm making a large painting and I'm using a thinner body paint, I pretty much will use an entire two ounce bottle to, um, to, to do the paint pour. Um, so... It doesn't really matter how expensive your paints are, so you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive paint. You can buy the cheaper paints at Walmart. Look at that color, you guys. Can you see that? Oh, it's gorgeous. This is gonna make a beautiful pour. Okay, so the first pour that we're going to do, and of course I got my canvas wet. <sighs> like a bull in a china shop today, guys. The first pour we're gonna do is gonna be something called a dirty pour. And I'm gonna use this clear glass. I normally use a Dixie cup, but I want you to be able to see it in here as we're working. So this is white paint mixed with the, um, the pouring medium. And you always wanna stir your paints, but don't stir them really fast because you don't want a lot of bubbles in it. If you get a lot of bubbles in there, um, those bubbles will end up in your painting and you'll end up um, having some issues because those bubbles will eventually pop and then you'll, your painting will be uneven. All right, so we're gonna start with some white as my base and then we're gonna just start adding some colors. So I'm gonna add some pink, just a little bit of pink. I'm gonna add some red. If 
I drip a little on my canvas, it's not a huge deal. We're gonna add a little bit of purple. I have this gorgeous silver, and I try to stick with about four colors. I don't typically wanna to go too many more than the four colors. And then you're gonna start your pattern over again. So you go back with a little bit of white, and I, I try to pour in the middle. So I don't know if you guys can see this. Can you see that? I do the best I can to pour in the middle. Um, but it's okay if you don't. I mean, it's, it's fine. So I'm pouring again. Let's see if you can see that. See how that's pretty much in the middle? We're going to do our red. And we're gonna do our silver. Okay, so we probably have enough paint here. Um, you know, let's go, I am gonna go one more round because if we have a little extra, we can, we can pour on one of the other pieces. So let's just pour a little bit more in here. Now, one thing I'm gonna add is a little couple of dots of silicone. This is just um, your regular silicone like you get at your automotive department, and this will help it react a little bit differently. I don't mix it in the paint because I don't use it all the time. And this is the first time I've used this silicone, so we'll have to see how this works. And you don't need a lot, you just need a couple. And what that does is it creates cells for you creates a whole new um, dimension, and I love that. Okay, we did purple. I'm sorry, we did pink. We gotta do a little bit of red on top. And the red was a heavy body paint, so it's a little bit thicker than some of the other ones. Let's do a little bit of purple, a little bit of silver, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pour this baby. Oh my gosh, I can already see the cells reacting in there with that with that paint or with that silicone sorry so i'm going to add just another little dot in there okay all right so for a dirty pour all you do is you are literally going to pour it on your canvas you can do it however you want you can do a zigzag you can go you can do an x so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to just start pouring this paint onto our canvas and I'm just kind of doing a figure eight motion. Look at how beautiful those colors are. Oh my goodness. And I don't probably need the rest of this so I'm going to hang on to it because I think that's going to be enough to do one of our um, one of our um, hearts. So what I try to do is get about three quarters of the canvas covered and then you're going to tear carefully tip now you don't want to tip fast because if you tip fast you're going to lose a lot of those gorgeous cells that you have like i love this part right here so i don't want to tip all of that out of there see how it's making a different shape you do need it to run off the canvas, so you wanna kinda of let it go, but look at how pretty that is. That is really starting to shape up. Now, if you get to a point where you are like, you know what, I really like this, I can come down here, dip, and I'm not gonna pull this anymore because I like the way that looks, okay? Um, there's a little clump of paint right there, so I'm just kinda of smoothing that out. And we're gonna come this way. And we're gonna kinda of let it flow this way. And now I'm gonna let quite a bit of my paint come off. And this is what we ended up with. Isn't that pretty? That silver in there is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, 
I make a complete mess when I do this. Okay, so I know you guys can't see this and I can't tip it, but there's some white showing here and I need to make sure that all of my canvas is covered because you don't wanna come back and do that afterwards. The paint's not gonna match and I'm gonna lift this up carefully. See this corner's not done and neither is that other one. So I'm just gonna take and I am going to take a little bit of the paint and just touch those spots up with my finger. And I see a few bubbles in here. You probably can't see them on camera, but I can see a few bubbles. So I'm going to just lightly try to get that bubble out of there. All right, so I'm just double checking to make sure that all of my corners are covered and we ended up with this gorgeous piece. I'm gonna take this over to my drying station and then we'll move on to our next piece. Okay, so the other thing for quick, quick cleanup is I highly recommend using baby wipes. I use baby wipes as a staple in my crafting. Um, so, and I don't use expensive ones. I just get the cheapest ones I can find um, because they will clean things up for you very nicely. Okay, now, since I have some paint left, I'm gonna grab one of these hearts and I'm gonna set one of these hearts down and we're gonna use that same paint because I have so much of that paint left and we're gonna do the dirty pour again. The dirty pour, and I still have paint left. I think we're gonna be able to do two of these. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm just gonna tip. And I'm kind of just moving the paint around. And I am going to do some free giveaways. I'm gonna mail some of these to you guys tonight. So stay tuned, those of you that stay tuned all the way till the end, um, we're gonna do some giveaways and I will mail these to you. So Super Cute Curations does quite a few things, but one of the things that I do are mobile paint parties. And those mobile paint parties um, allow me to come to you and and do all of these fun things. And I'm doing this live because we are getting ready um, in this new season to start to do paint pour parties. And um, I'm tipping this down because I love the cells up here and I want more of them to come down. So if I tip down, see how those are starting to come down? and it's getting some of that red cloudiness out of the way. And if I want it to kind of go to the right, I can turn it this way. Look at how beautiful that is. I think it turned out very nice. Now, you do want to be careful about things that have holes because that paint will dry and that hole will be there. So, I'm gonna grab something to poke that hole out. So give me just once, actually I can use this. So you do wanna make sure before you take it over to dry that you poke that hole and keep that clean. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over to the drying area. And now we're going to do another technique with this same paint that we have, which is called the dip method. So I'm going to move these cups. I'm going to move these cups out of the way here. And I'm going to take the remainder of this paint and I'm going to put it down in here. And I'm going to make these paint skins. So I keep these papers and, and what I'm using is um, I'm using freezer paper. And the reason why I'm using freezer paper is, is when this dries, I can peel it off and I, hi Marie, how are you? 
welcome. I can peel off this paint and I can use it again um, in other projects. You can make jewelry out of it. You can, um, you can make bookmarks. And so we're gonna take a day on my channel and we're gonna use up um, the paint skins. Okay, so this is called the dip method. And the dip method is exactly what it says. We're gonna take the item and we're gonna dip it in and pull it straight up. When you do that, you get a whole nother level. But before I do that, I'm gonna kind of move my paint around because it's thick. And I also wanna get those cells moving in a different way. All right, so I'm taking this and I'm gonna do exactly what I said is I'm going to just push it down in here gently. Now I would not, I typically do not do this with a canvas and pull straight up and you get a more marbled look when you do the dip method. So especially my paper crafters, those of you who love marbled paper, um, this method is great for that. And if you have a spot that needs more paint, just drop a little bit on it and then move that paint around. And then of course you wanna make sure your sides are good. So I'm just making sure my sides are good. And we ended up with this look. All right. So that gives us, in that little bit of paint that we had, we were able to do a four by six and we were able to do two of the hearts. Um, I'm gonna grab, just because there's so much paint, I'm gonna grab one more and just do one more quick dip. And then we'll, um, Move this paint, see it gets even more marbled each time you do it. Now, paper crafters, um, you can do this with heavyweight paper. If you use 100 pound paper, um, you can get this marbling effect with that paper. And that's kind of a really cool um, technique to use for journaling and some of the other things. Um, so I'm just kind of dabbing it oops, so that I can get the dimension in the cells and then I'm moving it just like I did the other ones. And the paint is starting to get thicker so it's not moving as nicely as some of the other ones, but look at that design. Can you see that? All right. So we're gonna change our color scheme up a little bit and we're gonna do something on glass. Now, not only can you paint on canvas, but you can also um, paint on glass. Um, now, you cannot do this and drink out of it. So you can't like do a cup or something like that. It has to be something that you are going to um, not use for drinking. If you're going to drink out of it, you need to make sure that you put a sealer or something on it, okay? All right, um, if you guys wouldn't mind, please um, give me a thumbs up if you're in here. And then if you wouldn't mind sharing my video so we get more people in here tonight, that would be wonderful. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just take this piece out. As I said, I keep that piece. We call that the skin. Watercolor paper will work, Luann. Um, the only thing about watercolor paper is you need to dip fast. So don't, um, don't saturate that paper and you, you just dip fast and get it out and it'll be fine. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and I do kind of spread it around a little bit um, where it's really thick because I don't need it that thick. And you guys, when this is done, it will peel right off of this freezer paper. If you lay it flat, it will, it will peel right off and you'll be able to use that for other projects. 
You can make cards out of it um, and all kinds of things. So we will take a day and do some of that. And when it's dry, it really needs to be dry. You can't like kind of let it dry partially and stack it up because they will stick together. So once they're all dry and you wanna store those skins, whatever you do, do not put them on top of each other. If you put them on top of each other, they're gonna to stick together and they're not any good, okay? So you wanna make sure you do that. All right, um, the next thing I wanna do is one of my favorite methods and that is the flip method. So we're gonna do this heart and I'm gonna go ahead and set up my little cups again. And this time, oops, this time I wanna use I'm going to use a little bit bigger container. So I'm going to start with my white again. I'm mixing it again because it's been sitting here. So we're going to start with some white, cover that bottom. We're going to add a little bit of red. Just a little bit. I'm going to add quite a bit of silver because I really want to see this metallic silver in here. This is flamingo pink. We're gonna add some of this purple that you all wanted me to mix up. And when this baby dries, you're just gonna see the gorgeous metallic in it. It's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna come back with my white. A little bit of my red, a little bit of my pink, my purple, and that's probably plenty of paint. I'm going to just put a drop of silver on top. Now, so for this method, you're, uh, what I do is I take a stick and I'm going to show you in the camera. Okay, so here's my paint. Can everybody see that? Okay, I go across once, lift my stick out, and go across again. Okay, I make an X. Look at that beautiful stick. Now, these you can let dry too, and they can become bookmarks or other crafts. Um, I don't personally do this, but I've seen ladies use these as plant markers. So they'll let this paint dry. They'll set them up, let this paint dry, and then they use them as plant markers. So, I mean, you can use every bit of, of this paint pour stuff, okay? So I'm going to set that there. Now what you do for the flip method is you put whatever it is that you have on top of your cup. And you have to work fast. Press down hard on the top with your left hand. If you're right-handed, you're going to hold the cup with your right hand. If you're left-handed, you're going to hold it with your left hand. Press down and flip fast. Get it down on your cups. And I like to let it kind of flow out a little bit. And then here's where we're going to see the cells. Are you guys ready? Hi, Chris. Welcome. And look at the beautiful cells that you get in this method. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go very slow so we can keep our cells. You get a few more bubbles with this method, a few more. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go down. Oops, sorry, I'm out of the camera. And we're gonna come back up. And this is just such a relaxing art. And anybody can do it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I know you can't see this, but these metallic paints have some big bubbles, so I must have these metallic paints are, oh, amazing. I'm 
Look at that. Is that not beautiful? Hi, Andrea, welcome. Look at how gorgeous that is. Now, I want this white to kind of pull up a little bit. So I'm gonna go this way and just tip a little more of the paint off. And then I have a little bit of the wood showing right here. So we're gonna come to this side. And I know that my paint is moving well. And sometimes I have to help it along a little bit. I really think this one's beautiful. Look at that. So there is, there's actually something in this paint right here. So if you get something in your paint, that's fine. Just pull it out quickly and then go ahead and just move that paint around to get it moving. Look at that, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure my sides are all covered. And we use the same colors that we used before, but we got a totally different look because we used more of the white and the silver. And I know it's probably hard for you guys to see, but this metallic is gorgeous. It is just shining. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over here. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is take these gloves off because we've done, I've done five pours with those. Hey, thanks, Chris. Glad you like it. So, any questions so far? We've done, so far we've done the dirty pour method. We've done the flip method, which is fun. Um, and now the next method I want to do is the tree ring method. Um, and then I have not done this one yet, but there is a method called the string method. And, you know, let's do the string method first. Let's do that one first. Let me grab some string. I've never done this, so this is the first time, but let's give it a try. So I'm just grabbing some basic string. And this string, we're going to soak in a paint color. Okay, we're gonna do that in a minute. So what I wanna do, is we're gonna raise these up a little bit this time. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna do this on a canvas because I've not done this on anything else before. And I'm gonna grab one more cup. All right. All right, and so for the string method, you need a lot of white. So I'm gonna use, I'm just really gonna get some white paint on here. And I think that's enough. And you can kind of smooth it out. Um, I'm just gonna use my stick. And I do want it to, to go over my edges. Now, I, a lot of people will ask me, you know, this wastes a lot of paint. Yeah, it does. But you know what? You can use those skins, like I said before, to, for other projects. But acrylic paint, for this type of project is fairly reasonable. It's not that expensive. All right, I better put the gloves on or I'm gonna have fingers that are a different color tomorrow. All right. So what I wanna do now is I wanna kind of level and actually I, I want quite a bit of white paint on here because if I don't do that, I'm not gonna have enough to really make this work. All 
All right, what color do you want me to dip the string in? Red, pink, or purple? You guys pick. Hi, Penny. How are you? What color do you guys want me to dip it in? Red, pink, or silver? Red, pink, purple, or silver? Chris says red. Chris, you're the first one, so guess what? We're doing it in red. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my string. I'm going to get it saturated in pink. I mean red, sorry. Goodness, I don't know my colors. Details, right, Chris? Details. <laughs> All right. So I want this very, very saturated. So I'm taking my stick and just really pushing that down in the paint. Okay, so now I have it and I have to work fast. So I'm just gonna create a zigzag. And then I'm gonna come straight down. All right, are you guys ready? I'm gonna put this under the camera. Okay, and so it creates something that looks like a flower. Now we're gonna kind of move this around. And my white may be a little bit thick, but you start to create sort of a flower shape. And here's the deal, if you don't like how it looks, you can always change it. So I wanna show you something. Let's say we don't like this, okay? If you work quickly, you can do a couple of things. One, you can take, I don't love this. I don't think it has enough to it. So we're gonna do this again, but we're gonna do it a little bit different. So you can quickly take a swipe and I'm gonna swipe all that paint off. Yep, I sure did. Got rid of all that paint. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some additional medium to this white because I don't like, it's too thick and I don't think it's uh, moving fast enough for us. So we're gonna add a little bit of medium and I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it because if it moves faster, we're gonna be able to get a better look, okay? Now, here's the deal. We're gonna end up with kind of a pinkish background. That's all right. I'm okay with that. So we're gonna add this back on and notice now I've really got that flowing. It's going to make pulling that string a little bit easier. And we're gonna get a little bit of a marble background in it. That's all right. Okay, so we now have a nice Might as well put it all in. All right. Yeah, it is amazing effect. We're gonna do it again, but I wanna, I'm gonna do something a little bit different because I have an idea. I think my string was too long. I need to be able to pull it longer and I think we'll get a better effect. So let's try it again. We're gonna dip this in the red. So I'm mixing it in, making sure it's nice and saturated. All right, I'm gonna undo this, get the knot out of it. Come to the top. And I'm gonna start pulling it. Now I'm gonna grab another one and we're gonna go over it with pink. And I 
typically work with blues, but because it's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of done with Christmas and on to, to Valentine's Day. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this one. And now, we can tip it and get a whole nother look. Oh wow, that red looks almost like fire, you guys. Yeah, didn't that, oh my gosh, look at that. Let me wipe the bottom and I'll come closer to the screen. Isn't that beautiful? And I maybe have it a little wet. I mean, I might not do it quite so wet, but boy, it sure does move and give you a whole different effect. It really just is gorgeous. All right, we'll take this one over to dry. Okay, that was a messy one. All right, what are you guys thinking? Shall we try some glass? You guys interested in, in seeing what it does on glass? Because I am. All right, let me kind of clean up what I have right here and we're gonna get some new cups and we're gonna pour on glass. Actually, I'm just gonna move this whole bin and I'll grab another container and we'll pour on that. All right, so what I did is I bought this glass frame and okay, it's an eight by 10 um, and it has a stand and my thought behind this would be, whoops, there went one of the pins on the floor, sorry about that, is that you could use this as a dry erase board. Once it dries, you could, um, you could put your um, initial on it. Um, you could wrap some twine around it and then put a um, clothes pin and you could hold, hang a picture. This would just be so pretty. All right, so. I do want to make sure though in this method that I do use gloves and the reason why is you do not want any oils on the surface that you're going to be putting your paint on. So I have these, um, they're just alcohol pads. Which I cannot get open. There we go. Okay, and I have to figure out now where I set. My, oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you though, before we move on, see these glass uh, pieces? You can get these at like the dollar store or Walmart. And I like to get the big ones because what you can do is all of those drippings that are so pretty, I can take and hold my glass piece, dip it in, and flip it over to dry, okay? But ultimately, what I just did, let me show you. And what I do is I create magnets. I just hot glue a magnet on the back of this when it's dry and you have really cool paint poured magnets. So another thing that you can do 
with all of those drippings. So you could craft for days. You could make tons of magnets. You can get an entire bag of those, um, those little rocks at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And you could make 20 or 30 magnets just out of your overspilt paint. All right, so before I prep this, I wanna go ahead and prep some paint. And I wanna do blues. Um, I'm definitely gonna use the rest of this silver. So I want, I like teals um, with a little bit of purple and a little bit of pink mixed in with it. So I'm gonna take this metallic, this dark metallic teal. I'm gonna put my pouring medium in the bottom first. And you know what? I'm just gonna mix in this one where the pouring medium was so I don't waste the cup. And I'm gonna put this beautiful dark teal in. And then I wanna use this bright teal as well because I think that's going to really pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up. And I'm gonna put just a cap full of water in. And we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna mix that up. You want the consistency to be the consistency of about honey or a little bit less than that. And you really want to mix it up because you don't want clumps. Um, the metallic paints, for some reason, um, they mix different than the other ones. And they get lighter than what they are in the tube. Um, and they typically, in my experience, dry just a smidge lighter than what they are in the tube. Okay? All right. So, now what we want to do is I want to prep this glass. So, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my cups up to hold this. Actually, let's use these smaller ones. And because this is glass, I'm gonna use five. Um, I don't wanna cut myself or, or have a mess here. All right, there we go. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking this, and I'm cleaning my glass. And I'm gonna grab another one here. And you're going to get, I don't think you guys can see this, but you get kind of like a film on there. It's kind of a, like a hazy film. And that's how you kind of know that you've gotten it everywhere. Then what I do is I don't, I don't pour with that film on there. I take a piece of paper towel and I kind of buff the glass until all of that is off and you have nice shiny glass. Whatever is underneath here, before you pour is what you're gonna end up with. So if you have fingerprints on the pour side, you're gonna see those. The other side you can, you can work with, but this side you need to make sure it's nice and clean. Okay. All right. Penny, your mom wants you to get some, or, or your daughter wants you to get some. This stuff's awesome. I love it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pour. I'm going to start with silver as my base. Usually I start with white, but I'm going to start with silver. Then I'm going to do this. Um, this is the non-metallic. I'm gonna use some flamingo. I'm gonna use some of the metallic, the silver again. I'm 
Normally I only use four colors, but heck, let's use the rest of this purple up too. So we'll add the purple, the teal again, the flamingo. I'm gonna scrape the rest of this flamingo out into here. Okay, we're gonna use some of the metallic. Purple, we'll use the rest of that purple up. If you drip a little on your canvas or whatever you're working on, I don't, I don't worry about that, I don't fret about that. You're gonna cover it up anyway. And some silver. Okay, so for this one, um, I've got just a smidge of purple left, so I'm gonna just add that on there. All right, I'm gonna go X, X, so I just did the X in there. Wipe off my stick, and we are going to just pour it on. So the glass is gonna react a little bit different when you manipulate it. So you wanna manipulate it a little bit slower than a canvas because it moves fast. So I'm kind of seeing, like I love this, this kind of looks like a, um, a geoid. Um, yes, we used acrylic paint with a pouring medium. And for those of you that missed the start of this, um, it will be on my my channel. Um, so you will be able to see it again and you'll be able to to save it and, and use it as you, you know, if you want to go and get these paints. Now, we I am going to do a paint pour event. Um, and I'm going to do it probably in my home. Um, in my studio. So if you're interested in you're in Michigan and you want to come do a paint pouring party, we will do two canvases and a glass picture frame. And if you register early, um, you'll get an additional item to paint pour. So I really want that silver to come down. Let me turn it. Sorry guys, I know it's kind of hard probably for you guys to see this. Isn't that beautiful? And it's gonna be hard for me to show you, but you're gonna have a choice between the back or the front. Um, you'll be able to use this either way. Now. What we want is more than likely you're going to want to write on it. So if you want to write on it or do that, you're not going to want to use this side. You're going to want to use the other side. Um, but if you're just going to use it for display, and maybe you want to just display a photo or something, it's okay to put the paint side out. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, I love this color combo too, Deborah. It is just beautiful. And that, that bright pink is, you know, it ended up turning more towards the purple or the violet end. I mean, and you can really play with this. I could keep manipulating this if I wanted to, to just get a totally different color. And, you know, um, Deborah, we might want to think about doing a paint pouring event for the event that you um, have asked for. Um, something to think about. That's another event we could do. Um, and then we could do, um, I could do vinyl with a saying like Mother's Day, something for Mother's Day or something like that. Okay, so you just let this dry. Now, the drying on these, you guys, you have to let these dry. You absolutely have to. And before I set this down, let's dip those last wood hearts that I have. 
in this color because I think this is so pretty. Oh, wow. Whoops. Well, that made it a little more marbled than I wanted, but it's still very pretty. And I'm trying to rush it, but look at that. So we'll let that one kind of rest. It's got a couple of bubbles on there because I dropped it again. All right, and I have one more. So we'll probably, I'll try to be a little more gentle with this one. Remember, dip down and straight up. Down and straight up. Ooh, this one's very pretty. Look at that one. Very, very pretty. Okay, let me go set this glass over here before I break it. And then we'll chat for a couple of minutes. do is I typically let these dry for 24 hours before I do anything with them. Um, you definitely want them to be completely dry. Um, you do not want them to be wet when you start manipulating or doing anything with them. Um, and then once you've been, once they've kind of dried for 24 hours, then you can pretty much do whatever you want with them. If you want to add vinyl, over top of your um, piece, you're welcome to do that. If you, you know, you can pretty much do whatever you want. All right, let's get this out of the way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean my hands and I'm gonna bring to the camera what these look like now that they've been set. So before I do that, though, are there any questions? Oh, I'm glad you like them, Luann. Okay, just I'm getting on here. So the other thing I want to do is I want to give away a couple of the pours that I did today. And what I'll do is I'll mail them to you. So what I want you to do is pick a number between... 1 and 30, and in just a minute when I say go, and the person who's closest to the number that I have written down, if you email me your mailing address, I will mail you one of these hearts for free, um, just for watching tonight and supporting. And the only thing I ask is, will you please share my video? Um, for those of you who who um, might be learning about Facebook, the shares create engagements and things like that. So I would really like as many as engagements as possible so that people come over to my business site. And um, if you're interested in a paint party, call me, message me, send me an email um, because I come to you and I bring everything. All right, so I'm going to carefully bring over what we did. <coughs> you guys, these are so pretty. And I'm gonna take you out of, no, I think I'm just gonna, I'll just do. All right, so this is the first one that we did. Look at how pretty that is. So that's the very first one that we did. And you can see it's already starting to dry along the edges. Now, if it dries matte, 
too matte finished for you, just take some, you can spray it with a glossy sealer. Um, I like to use the Krylon brand. So you keep this wet look so it looks like wet paint all the time. Um, or you can use Mod Podge gloss. Look at this one, you guys. I love this one. Isn't that pretty? Here's one that's more red. And what I pro would probably do with these hearts is I would just paint the backs of them black. Because this is what the back's going to look like. I would just paint them black. Look at this one. And it kind of had a, got, ended up with a swirl right here. Here's our blue. And the blue has a couple of bubbles. And this one's pretty much blue all over the back, so I think I'll just rub that paint in and I might get lucky enough that I won't have to redo the back of this one. But if I do, it's not a big deal. But this one has quite a bit of paint on it. Wait until you guys see our wood heart. Oh. All right, so that's the first batch we did tonight. The second batch we did, you guys, this heart is beautiful. If I don't spill anything or wreck anything, we'll be all set. All right, so this is the one that we did with a string. And when these dry, I will post them on my Facebook page so you can see what they look like dry. This heart is amazing. Look at that. All right, so, and I'll let the two, the glass dry for a little bit before I bring that one over for you to see, but let's do a giveaway. Who wants one of these paint pours from tonight? Sorry, I have to adjust this so it doesn't fall down. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna write down a number between one and 30. And the person who is closest to the number without going over is going to win one of these items. So go ahead and go. Give me a number in the chat. Go ahead and go. All right, Luann has 18. You cannot have the same number as anybody else. Deborah has 19. Andrea has 23. Penny has 7. There's a couple more who have not responded yet. For a free giveaway. All right. We're gonna end it in five, four, three, two, and one. And the number is 21. So the person closest without going over is Deborah Harris. Congratulations, Deborah. Deborah Harris. Deborah Harris is my first winner tonight. <coughs> All right, 
Let's do another drawing. For this drawing, I want to see what you guys remembered from tonight. So you know my first, my first um, career is teaching, or I'm an administrator, but teaching is what I do. So um, I want to know two, I want you to list me two of the methods we did tonight. List two of the methods when I say go, and I'm checking your comprehension. Um, I want to know what are two of the methods that we did tonight. Go. What are two of the methods called? Luann Summers was the first one that came into the feed. She said dirty pour and dip. Absolutely, we did a dirty pour, we did a dip, and we did the string pull tonight. Um, so we did do all of those. So congratulations, Luann. You are our second winner. All right, and we're gonna do one more winner tonight. One more winner. This one you might have to, I'm gonna see who has been reading my Facebook page, my business Facebook page. Super Cute Creations, who's been reading it? Does anybody know what the two, what, all you have to do is name one. What one of the new mixed media pieces are, I'm creating kits and I've showed them twice now. Can you tell me what they are, one of them? The mixed media kits. Who knows? Deborah and Luann, they both said it. Fairy, one of them is a fairy, absolutely. So we have a couple of pieces that I'm gonna show you before we get off. Some of the new pieces that I'm going to be teaching. One is this adorable gnome. And this gnome is a 16 by 20 canvas painting. So this is something we can do. I haven't finished this one, but I will show you. This is going to be a, war, uh, a door hanger. I have to paint his scarf yet and um, do a little bit on the hat. But it's going to say snowy white winter that melts into spring. So I think he's really cute. And Deborah and Luann, I'm going to send you both something extra in your package. Then I have this door hanger. Um, that you can do with either the flowers or if you don't like the flowers, you can do the simplistic version, which is this cutie. As you can see, I'm getting ready to cut out or to paint a wood gnome. Gnomes are really popular right now. Um, every place you go, just I want you to look like Target, all these places have these cute little gnomes out and they're now dressing them up for all seasons. Then um, I have a couple of mixed media pieces. Um, you can do the five by seven mixed media pieces. Those two are in one class. I have the canvas mixed media piece. And then what I'm really excited about is my husband and I designed these two new mixed media kits, and they are wood, original designs, original drawings, and then we create these adorable, um, you choose one or the other um, pieces, and then they can be varnished um, with a UV varnish, and they can go outside if you put enough coats on them. So, that's where we are. Awesome, thank you, Luann. Yeah, just send me your address through Messenger. That works for me. So last thing I wanna show you are 
the glass piece and the other heart. And then I'm going to let everybody go. I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching tonight. Um, each Tuesday night, I'm going to either have a video or a live like this. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see, let me know. Um, so I'm going to grab those and I'm also going to let you know, um, next week is going to be the, a power word painting. Um, so for those of you that have been watching my YouTube channel, you know that I'm thinking about power words this year and look at this. I can't show you too much because it's still pretty wet, but yes, both of the, whoops, there we go. See, I knew that was going to happen. Both of those are very pretty. All right. So I hope everybody had fun tonight. I hope you enjoyed this. Does anybody have any questions for me? Sorry, as you're looking at me like, why is she making crazy faces? Um, I'm trying to read my phone so I can see your messages. Did I miss anybody's questions throughout the night? Now, cleaning this up, um, if you get it on your clothing, you have to wash it right away off with um, soap and water. As soon as you get it on, wash it off. Your hands... Um, I use baby wipes to get the majority of it off, and then I just use Dawn dish soap, um, and I just scrub the rest of it off. That glass, in order to clean the back of that glass, what I'm going to do when that all dries really well is I'm going to carefully take a paint scraper and scrape that back off. I'm going to try it first with a magic eraser. Um, the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, I think that's going to take it off without a problem. But if I can't, <coughs> I'm going to use this paint scraper very lightly on the back so I don't scratch the glass um, to get that off. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up. Please share this video. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Just a reminder, every Sunday at 6 p.m. I have a live um video. It's a live YouTube video. So Tuesday nights, I'm on Facebook Live and um, Sunday nights, I'm on YouTube Live. So I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. If you're interested in painting, please send me a message and bye everyone. Have a great week.